Well, happy Thursday. I'm so glad you joined me for five to seven minutes as we look into God's word. Hopefully we are challenged by it. And if need be, we are comforted by it. And isn't it amazing that we are both challenged and comforted by God's word? Well, we're going to be in Genesis chapter 50. Today, we end our study on the life of Joseph. I hope that you have enjoyed it. I hope it's been beneficial. Uh, for me, it's been good to go back and, and take a bird's eye view of it and just look at a chapter a day, remind myself of what happened, and then remember some applications and even find some, some new truths or uh, some refreshed truths probably would be better said and a renewed excitement about this story. So we're going to be in Genesis chapter 50 this morning if you want to get your copy of God's Word. As you get there, I have a question to ask you, and it's an odd one, and I'm going to bring it full circle by the time we're done. The question I have to ask you this morning is, would you, have a, would you rather have a lot of small rewards, or would you rather save up a lot of small rewards for a really big reward? Or another way of saying it, remember when we got to go to the carnival or the fair and you put the ball or knock the, the, the milk bottle off and you got a little prize. And then if you did that again, you could exchange one prize, uh, two prizes for one bigger prize. That's the idea. Would you rather have a lot of smaller things or save up for the big one? Let's get into Genesis chapter 50 and I'll bring it full circle because remember from yesterday, Jacob says goodbye, and he blesses his sons. So here we go in Genesis chapter 50. Jacob has died, and Joseph has sought permission to leave Egypt and go to the promised land, to return to the promised land to bury his father Jacob. I need to stop right here and, and apologize. I, I misspoke. I got my, my Jacobs and my Josephs mi mixed up yesterday, and I said that Jacob was going to stay in Egypt until the exodus. I was wrong on that. Joseph stays, and I apologize. I need to go back and clarify that. All right, so let's keep going. Jacob, he dies, and Joseph, he seeks permission from Pharaoh to take his father and honor his last wishes and bury him in the cave that we talked about in Genesis chapter 40. So they go, they have a memorial service in the time of mourning for Jacob. Now I want to stop here, and, and this is a good reminder that it's it's good for closure to have that service to offer an opportunity for people to say their final farewells. And that's been a hard thing here in the pandemic is we haven't been able to get together and to have those services and to have that opportunity for closure and it hurts and it and it's very difficult. And so it's just another uh, reminder from scripture the the opportunity we have for that closure to say goodbye to our loved one. Now, Joseph, he goes, and it's not just as simple as he walks down the street or, or he calls the funeral director. He has to travel a significant time with his father and with his family, his whole family. And then also scripture tells us that there were members of, J of Pharaoh's household that joined Joseph. So we read in the first 12 to 15 verses that Jacob in his memorial service. Now that Jacob has passed, the brothers are fearful of Joseph's wrath. Remember that question that I asked you, would you rather have a little bit all the time or one big one? The brothers are fearful because they said, we've got a little taste of what Joseph can do to us in Genesis chapter 46 and 47, where he locked them in prison and prison and blame them for taking things and put Benjamin through that. And they were all nervous. They got a little sample of the power and the authority that Joseph has. And now they're afraid going, Joseph is going to unload on us and we're going to get the whole thing because dad has passed away. And Joseph was being respectful to father. And now that there's no one here to hold him back, he's going to lash out at us. So the brothers, they're seeking forgiveness again. And here they come again on their hands and knees, and they're bowing to him. Remember Joseph's dream when we first started this devotional? And then the brothers laugh, but now they're not laughing. They're coming to him saying, we are looking for forgiveness, and we want to be your servants as a way of saying, I'm trying to make up for what I did for you. They are living in fear. But Joseph... He takes the long view. And one of my favorite passages is Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. What man meant for evil, 
God used for good. What the brothers tried to do for evil, they got rid of Joseph because Joseph was tattling on them. He was running to their father, Jacob. He was mocking that he got the coat of many colors and they didn't, that he was the favorite and they weren't. And they just didn't get along. And brothers said, fine, we'll throw you in the pit and we'll see how this dream of yours works out. That was meant for evil. Joseph is not stuck there looking at the evil. He sees that God had a plan. God gave Joseph the dreams. God gave Joseph the, uh, Joseph the opportunity to interpret the dreams and then the wisdom from God to store away the food for the famine during the time of plenty. Now, Joseph, he doesn't retaliate to his brothers, but he offers them forgiveness. And look who gets the credit. God gets the credit. What man meant for evil, what you meant for evil, God has trumped or God has gone over that evil and has done it for good. Now, it's hard to go through a situation like Joseph has, and we've read through this in the last oh, three weeks or so, and we've had the creature comforts. But just imagine the long life that Joseph had wondering and, and wringing his hands saying, God, what are you doing? I just don't understand. And it's difficult when we're going through hard times to understand what God is doing. But oftentimes, once this, that storm passes or clears, then you can see God's hand at work and guidance. And ultimately, you can see God's good coming through. I was reminded of Romans chapter 8, verses, uh, in Romans 8. It says, and we know that all things work together for the good for those that are called according to God's purposes and that they love God and are called according to his purpose. And I thought, what a great reminder. And we know, but it's not that we hope or that we think that we know that all things work together for those that love God, for those that walk in obedience to God and his word. So Joseph, he lives for 110 years and then he passes away. But Joseph, he speaks prophetically before he passes, almost as his father Jacob did. And he says that God will lead you out of Egypt. You're not going to stay here. You're going to go back and reclaim the promised land, even though you're not there to occupy it right now. You will go back and get it. That sets us up perfectly for the book of Exodus. So if you want to continue to read this weekend, start reading into the book of Exodus. You're going to see how the Israelites are moved out and Exodus, meaning exit. They exit Egypt and they start their journey back to the promised land of Canaan. So Joseph says, don't worry, you're going to go back in, in a couple of years. So Joseph, he makes his family make a promise to him. He brings his family, says, hey, I need you to promise me that you will not leave me here when you leave. All right. So Joseph says, you don't have to take me right now, but when you leave, it's a promise of things to come. When you need leave, not if you leave, but when you leave, take my bones and take them back to the promised land. Don't leave me buried here by myself. So as we wrap up the life of Joseph, Take a step back and look at Genesis 37 through 50. Which part of Joseph's life can you easily identify with? Which part can you lean in and say, yeah, I really understand that. I really can identify with that. My ultimate hope is that each one of us can identify with Joseph's long view that he has, that he sees the evil that happened to him, but he's not, if you will, handicapped by that. He sees that God had an ultimate plan. And we, and you, and he, and us, wow, that was awkward. I'm sorry. Let me try it again. And we all can see God's hand of blessing, God's hand of provision, even during the times of difficult. What man meant for evil, God has meant for good. My hope and my prayer is that you believe what man has meant for evil, God can use for your good to bring you closer to a relationship with him, that you can go and lead someone else to the foot of the cross and they can meet Christ. What a great testimony and a great challenge as we look at the big view of the life of Joseph. I hope you have a great weekend. If you want to join us for church in the building, we're going to have a 9 o'clock and a 1030 service. We have Sunday school at 8 o'clock as well. We're going to be studying the life of Daniel in Daniel chapter 5 this week, if you'd like to read ahead. If you're not ready to come and join us, we will be broadcasting our service around 930 on Sunday morning on our Facebook page through the church.
And if you do have a church that you go to, I hope you have a great weekend worshiping the Lord. And I'll see you back here Monday morning for a new study in the New Testament somewhere. You'll have to turn in Monday to see what we're doing. Have a great weekend. I'll see you soon. Be safe.